hands in your back and I put a strip of plastic on your mouth, you can't eat. This is an herbicide. Destroying the microorganism, therefore, the root is starving. First drama. You have four drama for the vines. Second drama. You need to bring growth because it's not growing. So you bring growth under the form of chemical fertilizer. Mm. Chemical fertilizer are salt. So at lunchtime, you will take a teaspoon of salt and you swallow. Half an hour later, you are extremely thirsty. Mm -hmm. And you drink and you drink and you drink. So, the growth obtained with chemical fertilizer is a growth based on water. Therefore, the plant is disorganized. Therefore, the traditional disease, mildew oidium, which could be easily controlled with copper and sulfur, which are two natural products, doesn't work. So, third drama. They were inventing molecules of synthesis, which goes directly in the sap, the green thing inside the plant, within half an hour. Big progress, you have a storm, you have water, you have heat, no disease. The problem, you are poisoning the sap and therefore you are weakening the system which catch the climate. So, no link to the soil, small link to the climate. Fourth drama and last drama. You have a crop which is unattractive. You need to sell it. So, the inventive technology, today about 320 taste under the form of aromatic yeast obtained through genetic and control of acidity, control of the alcohol, fat, enzyme, phosphate, etc. At the end, you have a good wine, but it has zero personality. It's not marked by the place of origin. So the conclusion, you have two sorts of good wines. Those made by technology, you can't tell if it comes from Chile, from California, from Europe, etc., and the opposite, those done by organic farming or by biodynamic farming. Organic farming is just, I am not disturbing nature. I don't bring products which are disturbing nature. What is the difference between biodynamy and organic? People say they look at the moon. The difference is very important. So, you have to understand this. It's extremely important. First statement. Life. What we call life. The fact that the brain is growing. The fact that we are alive. Life does not belong to the earth. The earth, our planet, receive life because it is a member of the solar system. If you put a black plastic around the earth, almost everything would die. This is essential to understand. Life is a gift to the earth because we are a member of the solar system. Next question. How does it come, that life? It is sunny, you receive the sun, it's very pleasant. How does it come? It comes through wavelengths and frequencies. Cosmic wavelengths and frequencies, which is a huge system of information, which will have an early flower flowering in February and a late flower flowering in June or in July. Just a system of information. What is the pollution today? Stop that big blah blah. The pollution is not the CO2, very little, 10% maybe. The real pollution is electromagnetic pollution, wavelengths all over the planet, antenna, 
GPS for finding your way, all these mobile phones, a huge intensity of frequencies and wavelengths in all the slices of the atmosphere. So, the link of the planet Earth to the solar system is weakened. What is the defense of the Earth, our planet, when it's not linked really to the solar system? Inversion of the magnetic polarities. Now the magnetic north is about 800 kilometers of where it should be. And it's going faster and faster. Again, the CO2 is very little. Then, when you practice biodynamic, even on the, on the size of that room, understand that each biodynamic preparation is like a mobile phone number, <laughs> but with this mobile phone number, you have one planet. Each preparation is linked to one planet. So the 502 is linked to Venus, the 503 is linked to Mercury. It's just a system of reception through plants and organs of animals to increase the life forces. That's all what it is. It's maybe we use 10 to 100 grams by hectare. It's very little. Understand that it's just a better acoustic for life. That's all what it is. And then I can answer your question. If biodynamy is well done and not a flag by my wine, I am biodynamy. If your management is right, if your place is a good place for vines, because you can't plant, can't plant vines everywhere, the result once you have the grape, once you have pressed the grape, you should never interfere. Let things happen. Don't control anything. If you think you have to control, it means that you have missed something outside. Uh, if you come in front of the vine in March, you have nothing. Just small buds. You come now, you have branches, you have leaves, you have grape. This did not exist six months ago. Didn't exist. So it's few tons by hectare. Take the water away, it's called dry matter. Keep that figure. 94% is photosynthesis, the soil is only 6. Biodynamy is just a system for welcoming life forces. That's all what it is. And then, if that incarnation of energies into matter, under the form of grape, wood and leaves, is well done, the grape has the information for what to do in the cellar. Malolactic or no malolactic, Sugar at the end or no sugar at the end. Normally it burns all the sugar. But you should never control it. If you control it, you are changing the music of the year. And each year is a different music. So that's a short summary. Now, tell me about your questions. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'd like to know the preparation from the 500 to 508. Ah. So, may I see the reality yeah. of the recipe? Preparations? <laughs> yes. Now, the preparation. Look, you have four levels of life. First, <coughs> stones, rock, minerals. Dead. You have never seen a stone walking away. It's dead. Above, you have vegetal. Vegetal, they don't move away, but they can grow downward and upward. I could explain what is a vine, because some plants have a strong power in their root and a small power upward. Other plants have a huge power upward and a small power with their root. You have to understand each plant between gravitation, sun attraction. They all behave differently. Third level of life, animals. 
If it's terribly hot, an animal can go in the shadow of a tree. A plant cannot do that. <laughs> so plants are looking at animals like they look at a master. Very important for what you do, huh? because we have all the animals here. Uh, and then you have human beings. And you have nine more, which people have forgotten. So, one basic idea behind the biodynamic preparation. You choose a plant, very specific, which has an effect on one organ. Like, for example, chamomile is digestion. Uh, yarrow is kidneys and that system. So you choose a plant which acts on one organ and you put that plant in the organ of an animal where it is well developed. Example, a cow has a huge power for digestion. Cow is the longer gut of all the animals in Europe. So huge power. Then you take the guts of, and you know that chamomile is acting on digestion. So we cut the flower chamomile, we dry it, and at fall we put it inside the gut of an animal, of the cow, like you do sausages, and you bury this underneath the soil for six months. Another example: horns. Today the horns of animals are sometimes terrible like this. It's dramatic. Normally a horn is a vortex going outward. So, in the tradition, I don't know in Asia, but in the tradition, in the Middle Age, you were not drinking water. You were drinking water which was put in a horn for a few hours. Because the horn are a connection to the sun. I've put in... Maybe I have it here, I'm not sure. In one of my books, I was putting a picture. No, whatever. Doesn't matter. But uh, if a cow has its own, you will see that the cow is then keeping its head very upward. If the cow has no horn, because most farmers cut the horn, the cow will walk like this. So you see, through the horn, the cow is related to the sun, and the sun is an upward force. So, 40 years ago, when I was starting biodynamy, I thought it was a bit where. <laughs> so what I did, you take manure from a cow, I was filling horns, with the manure of a cow, and I was taking a small pot in clay, putting the same manure and all this in the same hole. Okay? And six months later, in spring, you see you have fall where the forces of the earth are bigger. Twelve hours, twelve hours, twelve hours of night, twelve hours of day, equinox. Then now it's lower, so gravitation is stronger. In spring, sun attraction is stronger. So we do that in fall. I was burying the, cow, the horn with the manure, and I was burying my little pot with the manure, clay pot. I will see if there is a difference. Then in spring you get it out, you send it to laboratory, the microbial life in the manure, which was in the horn, was 70, 70 higher than the manure which was in a clay pot. Which means that you can use organs of animal for increasing a process of life. This is the base of the biodynamic preparation. And manure in a horn for the life of the soil and silica in a horn for forces of the sun above the soil. This becomes a bit long to explain this. But basically you are just with the right biodynamy reconnecting your place to the system which provides life on earth. But you can make many mistakes. You can prune very long and have huge yields. Like 
You don't do the same work if you work four hours a day or if you work 20 hours a day, you won't have the same quality of work, same for vine. So for me, a good yield is 2,000 liters, maximum 3,000 liters by hectare. If you ask to Lalubiz, she will tell you never more than 1,500 liters by hectare. Vous m'appelez, M. Joly, oui. c'est très, mais okay. vous m'appelez. D'accord, merci. Uh, so, low yields. Then, you can push it. Which graft do you put in the soil? You want a vine which goes, you want root which goes like this and not like this. And, and refuse that stupid clone which is planted since 20, 30 years all over the world. Look, you are a group of six people. You're all different. You talk to each other. If you were cloned, and if you were the same, it would be terribly boring. You would talk to yourself. So a clone is stupid. It's convenient. Convenient, because it is the same. It comes out together. It's ready together. It can be harvested in one shot. But it is stupid. So avoid clones. Try to put always your own wood so that the typicity of their place is increasing. Uh, we have here almost 900 years of, of vines, so we always keep the same wood. So that within Chenin, we have specific Chenin. This is important. And then what else? Low yields, no clones, and then animals. You see, biodynamic is an organism. It's not just movement. So, by bringing animals on an estate, I have here the sheep. We will put them on the vines now because the harvest is completed. I have horses, I have cows, I have goats, I have donkeys. Each time you bring a different sort of animal on a place where biodynamic is well done, It's like if you are putting an extra string to a musical instrument. The music is deeper. So, we, you reach here the idea that farming should return to an art. The art of catching the right forces so that the grape, if you make, if you make wine, or, 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 or the Corn, the wheat, if you make bread, is fully charged of an originality. At your generation, you will see it. Farming will return to an art. Farming is free. It's just a matter of getting the right forces. And two, farming should be an art picking the right forces. It's long to explain. According to the position of the planet, towards the zodiac, towards the earth, you have specific conditions where you say, okay, this I want. And then you work your soil at that time or you do a dynamization at that time. So this is the basic idea. And as I said, the conclusion is do not interfere in your cellar. Last thing. Here... I can show you a picture. Uh, I am always shooting for a fairly advanced maturity. Yeah. Right. You see, it should be like this. 10-15% of noble rot. You see? This is really bringing uh, a third level of taste. So, some people think it's oxidation in the cellar. It's not at all oxidation in the cellar. It's concentration of another maturity. If I was doing 100% of this, I would make a sauterne. No. But if you do 5, 10, 12, we don't have it every year. Huh? You can have a dry wine, plus this support behind, which is thick and pleasant. So... This is very important. Generally speaking, people are harvesting too early mm. mm -hmm. for avoiding disease. But you don't mm. cut a flower before it is opened. 
And for me, it's very convenient because I let people harvest and then I get their worker. <laughs> When they're finished, I get the workers. But uh, I think it, people have uh, harvest early to avoid alcohol on the label. You see, because if the consumer see 14, ah, 14 is too much. But blind, you don't taste that it is 14 or 15, if your farming has been good. So, and people are scared of disease coming or bad weather. But if you are in biodynamic, you shouldn't be scared of that. So, then in the cellar, I don't want new wood. This is absurd. I don't want any control. No control of temperature. The fermentation lasts six to eight months. Very slowly. Very slowly. It happens. You let it come. You don't interfere. The wine is ready. Dry. It's rare that we have sugar. Huh? The wine is ready between April and June. Yeah. You let it rest. We make what we call a pre-filtration, not a filtration, pre-filtration, and you bottle it, full stop. It's very easy. Now, it has been done like this for centuries and centuries. But when modern farming came and was breaking many harmony in nature, mm -hmm. the cellar became an hospital. <laughs> But the cellar shouldn't be an hospital. So now you have two sort of tests. Those perfect tests achieve through technology, but you have no one talking in the bottle. You know, when I take one, I want to feel someone. I want to have someone in the bottle. I want to have the feeling that something is there. This perfect wine, I always compare them to aesthetical surgery. You know, You can achieve beauty through aesthetical surgery, but it will never be like a natural beauty. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's two different ways. I accept these two ways. I s just say that the consumer is fooled, and it should be on the back label all what was done in the cellar. <laughs> Because wine growers and restaurants are free of that obligation. If you produce cakes and yogurt, you are obliged to put everything. Wine grower and restaurants do not have that commitment. So, you can have in a restaurant a beauty, beautiful omelette with a real taste of truffle, without one bit of truffle, just a synthetic molecule made by Givaudan. It tastes like truffle, it is not truffle. Same for wine. Same for wine. So, Uh, this is where you have these two ways, and you have more and more people going that way. Two last things. First, nature wine. Don't get fooled by this. It means nothing. There is no legal commitment behind the word nature wine. So you can have one guy using Monsanto or Roundup calling himself nature wine because there is no legal commitment. So if you want to catch that market without becoming organic or biodynamic, you call yourself nature one. I think there should be a legal commitment of the producer toward the consumer. And then you have to move to organic or biodynamic. You may have some good people in nature wine. You may have people complete faker. That's one thing. Last thing protection against oxidation. How do you protect your wine against oxidation? You have four ways. Sulfur, mm -hmm. sorbate of potassium, terrible poison, uh, acid ascorbic, which is a vitamin mm -hmm. C, mm -hmm. or very tight filtration. Now, if once in your life you can taste the wine before a tight filtration and after you realize it's a murder. I, I tell the consumer, don't buy the wine, buy the filter. <laughs> Because the wine stays on the filter. So, a tight filtration, which is done by many people, even organic, for me, 
is strongly affecting the wine. Yes, the wine rebuilt itself, but never at 100%. It rebuilt itself at 70%. So it's really affecting the wine. Acid ascorbic is vitamin C. Few people accept to put vitamin C in their wines. Sorbate of potassium is a table poison. And Bruxelles uh, said they will forbid it in eight year. It's still permitted. It's not heavily used in France. It's heavily used in America. Not in France. But it's used. Sometimes in France, you see a guy, he puts on the label, free of sulfur. So oh, the customer is happy, free of sulfur, <laughs> I buy it. <laughs> and, and it's done with sorbate of potassium. It's 20 times. Left. Last, sulfur. If you take sulfur from a volcano, if you have a small machine which was created by a friend of us, like small container, one pipe bringing oxygen, you put your dose of sulfur, this is closed, one pipe where, where the smoke is going out, you put it directly in the wine without racking the wine. That's extremely convenient. If you do this with a volcanic sulfur, you need very little. It's extremely efficient. Now, the only thing, volcanic sulfur is not legal. Still, huh? <laughs> many of us do it. It's not legal. Huh? No. Okay. Ah, the industry is controlling everything. Okay. They want you to buy, you know. Okay. The thing. But uh, volcanic sulfur is by far the best for me. It is the chemical industry which decided that sulfur and copper were dangerous mm -hmm. to force markets on their table synthetic molecules. Mm -hmm. But copper and sulfur at normal doses are absolutely harmless. So, and now they, they are trying to forbid copper. See, the industry is really seeing that nature is taking their market. Mm -hmm. They don't want it, so they try to take laws. Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this, I think, is... A, so uh, here we have three harvests. We always harvest with that maturity when we can have it. And we bottle the wine between June and September. Uh, and last thing. If you want to make sure that the bottle you have is natural. What do you do? You buy a bottle, like we are doing here permanently. You take a glass, you recork it. Take it back in two days. You take a glass, you recork it. When the wine has received life because of a good farming, mainly biodynamic, oxidation comes as a destruction because oxidation is a death force. The wine reacts. If the wine has not received life because of modern farming, in the cellar life has been distorted by all these legal tricks played by analogs. After two, three days of opening, the wine is collapsing. So this is a good test for finding what will be the aging capacity of a wine. I had here... Ten days ago, uh, sommelier from a three-star Michelin. And he said, I'm very worried about my Bordeaux, because they don't age. Ten years, poof, sometimes less. This is linked to farming. With a good farming, your wine should last 20 years, 30 years. And a good test to see it is just to follow the wine. I was... You know, you know, I made a group called Return to Terroir, Renaissance des Appellations. You can find yeah, it on the internet. Yeah. Uh, I had a group. I had a guy from Georgia. He came last May. Six hectares, good man, doing a good job. I followed the wine for six weeks. A little bit every three days. And in six weeks later, the wine was still there. The bottle was almost fully empty. Very interesting. I took Terramano, this woman uh, in, uh, in Toscana. I had a small bottle from her. I totally forgot that bottle. <laughs> it was recorked. Maybe that much of wine. I found it again three days ago. At least since two months. Perfect. 
Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. You see, it's all a matter of reconnecting <laughs> life forces to your vines. Please, you have some. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. but, but yes, so I finished. <laughs> no, it's a pity. But it's very interesting. And, and among the 220 uh, names that we have in the group Renaissance, uh, you have maybe 30 who are absolutely outstanding, really outstanding wine. So, and last story I tell you, and I stop after because <laughs> uh, we have in Austria a very interesting wine grower called Werner Michelit. It's called Mein, mein Klang is the name of the estate. He did a very interesting experiment. He has maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 hectares of vines. He took four hectares, divided it in two. He is in Biodynamis since 15 years. Huh? Divided it in two. On one half, he do nothing. Just copper and sulfur. No pruning. So after three years, it's a huge mess. You have the vine everywhere, tiny grapes of that side, but many, 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 many. And the other half is done normally. But blind testing. Number one, number two. Which one do you prefer? 90% on the side of the wine which was not touched. That's extremely interesting. We think we know a lot, but... Not as much as we think. So, by not acting at all on an estate, and the harvest is stable because you cut small grapes with four bulbs, five bulbs or more, but this creates blind a better wine. That's very interesting. Another experiment you can do, you buy one good bottle, Biodynami, one good bottle, same level of price, uh, normal, not organic, normal, conventional, blind, Write your notes and take back the bottles five days later. Ta- you just record. Take it back ten days later. Complete change. You have to do it blind because then you know you are not fooled by your mind. Very interesting. So all this lead to the conclusion that that a wine where nature is understood in depths where the forces which bring life to your place are understood, bring a taste which is very different. And then the consumer has to understand which takes time. But this, this is the summary. You still have questions? Yeah. Yes. Uh, on, your, uh, on your website, yes. I saw that uh, you mentioned that you used milk as yes, a, as a replacement of sulfur. Yes, uh, it what's works. the reason? Why I don't know, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> so to use, uh, you, you take plastic? seven. Now it's done a lot in Italy. Hmm? You take seven, eight liter of milk. Very efficient against oidium. A little bit against mildew. Uh, you can take. You call the little milk, oh, which okay. is a byproduct. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You can take uh, uh, little milk is a byproduct of the cheese. But you see, milk has another advantage. Milk, if it's very hot, mm. you can get leaves which are burned by the sun more and more in these years. Milk is a sort of cream which protects against the burning of the sun. So. It's not only treating oidium, it's also, it has a second quality, one quality against disease, but second quality, protection against the burning of the sun. That's very interesting. Uh, yes, this is free. I mean, you could find. I was using, 15 years ago, seaweeds. Well, some seaweeds worked extremely well against mildew and oidium. You see, the teaching is not there. When you walk on this estate, you have at least 20 plants which you could use as a drug for your health. This teaching is not given anymore. They want you to buy products, synthetic, etc. But medicine 
used to be almost free for people of the country. They knew that plant and that property, that plant and that property. You could do the same for, for, for a vineyard. And uh, another thing you have seen, when you are at the end of the alley of Cypress, there is one field where I didn't put vines. It's on purpose, because monoculture is dramatic. And, and one way to fight monoculture is animals, as I've explained, but also keep one or two spots free of vines. So on that field in the middle, we, where we could make very good wine, uh, it will remain with the horses. The horses were yeah, there up to two days ago, and you had a race, so I took away the horses. And also have another part where I have the goats. And you see, beard in me is just... Photosynthesis is catching energies and bringing that at an earthly level. And beard in me is the same. So the more complex is your life from vegetables and from animals, the more complex will become your wine. Mm. And last, I tell you the story which happened in Japan. Very interesting. The Pullman, However, the Pullman, the Pullman methodology, a, a, a great culture of Pullman, Pullman long mm -hmm. Could be, I uh, don't, yeah. I'm not aware of that. It could be. Uh, I was making a course of biodynamy in uh, in Japan, and I always show animals. Say, I show the cow where you act on the leaves because it's linked to water. I show the horses. You act on the fructification because it's linked to it, etc. And one guy was suddenly, one Japanese was suddenly say, I understand, I understand. He told the story. He, he was always having a gold medal for his sake. Mm -hmm. Now, what was interesting, his grandfather told him after the crop, bring ducks. They spare, they eat the spare grains, and they reject their manure. What is a duck? A duck is a bird. It's a bird of water. A bird is well above uh, an animal like the horse. The horse is linked to eat, but all the birds are more linked to eat. Mm -hmm. That's why in their manure you have a lot of phosphor. And, and uh, what is rice? Rice is a grain, but it's a grain intensely linked to water. So by bringing ducks or geese, that kind of bird, on a plantation of rice, you are helping the rice to fully express its forces, its archetypal forces. Through this, he always had this first price on his sake. So it's interesting to see that you can help a sort of plant to show all, the, all its qualities. All this is the farming of tomorrow. All this will come more and more. So, so, uh, and I can continue for a few hours. And another question. Yeah, uh, would you kindly explain the difference between the normal clone and the clone, yes. ma uh, masala and selection? Masala selection. Yes. Yeah. What's the difference? Clone? You take one foot of vines, you make 100 million or 200 million copy. Mm. The same. Massal selection, you go in a vineyard, not planted with clones, and you will select maybe 200, 300 different sort of vines, small difference. Mm. Maturity, shape of the grape, shape of the leaves, more or less cut, um, uh, resistant to disease, you can find many things. So, you mark this feet and you take these woods when you are grafting the vines. So massal selections, you have maybe 100 to 300 different quality. Clone, it is the same. It's a drama for nature. Because nature doesn't like the same. Nature likes diversity with the same kind. You have maybe two, 300 different kinds of chenin. They call themselves chenin, but you have maybe two, 300 kinds. So, so uh, with the massal selections, you keep the diversity of the kind. With the clone, you lose it. So now, you have to be very careful because the world is very tricky. But now, uh, you can buy massal selections of clones, <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. What? It's often three clones or four clones. But they call it massal selection because it's easier to sell. Uh, so, Christ, eventually... 
all muscle installations come from the same from, come from the same clone, but when it plant into the vineyard, it may show difference. No, Small no. differences between You see, clones mm. came only at the end of the 70s of last century, 1970 to 1980. For centuries, otherwise, people were in their vines selecting the best and you would ask for the selection of that man or that man because their selection was very well done. But it was always a selection. Mm. Then the engineers came and said, we want that one. He's producing a lot. The quality is not too bad. With one single foot, I made 200 million. And it is the same. So it's convenient if you are considering that winery is an industry. It's convenient because then the maturity is the same, you treat at the same time, you harvest in one shot, but you are losing the diversity. Like, we harvest normally three times. Eh? On the same spot, exactly the same square meter, with the same maturity, the taste is different after one week. So, this maturity... We can say it's achieved the 20th of September. Mm -hmm. You find the same maturity on the same spot one week later. The taste is not the same. So when you have a three, four times, sometimes it is four, you have four tastes. Same maturity, same spot, same appellation. And when you have blind tasting, one tell you, oh, I like better the first one. No, I think the third one is better. At the end, you mix it. And everybody is happy. But it's important to understand that clones cannot do that because they are all the same. It's like if you select one human being for making the population of a country. It would be stupid, you see. So this is the difference. Yeah, so could I say that um, after five, 15 or 100 years in the VR, they are still all Shenanbaron, but have slightly difference between yes. Yes. each of them. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. If no clones was planted. Mm. Now, if you plant clones, if you have a good biodynamy, after 30 years, you may find small differences which start again on each one, but small. Yeah. But a little bit. It's much easier to go in your vines. Massal selections, if you look for it in France, you can find it abroad much less. But we all know each other, you know, and you have a massal selection from Chardonnay. Yes, this one is good. You can still have it. Today, massal selection is less than 10% of the vines planted. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. 90% is grown, at least, at least. But it is changing slowly. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned uh, uh, to prevent the uh, oxidization. You say you mentioned that uh, you can use uh, vitamin C and the poison. Acid, vitamin C is acid ascorbic. Yes, you can use sorbate of potassium, dangerous poison, okay. legal. Okay. <laughs> legal. Uh, you can use very tight filtration, one third of a micron. It's called sterilizant. I mean sterile filtration. Okay. This. This is used by it's used by some good wine growers, organic or biodynamic. Okay. The problem is that it's like if you take a very nice painting mm -hmm. from a very well known painter, you knock it and you say, I will restore it. <laughs> you, see okay. that? you see what I mean? Um, I think it should be avoided. I think okay. it should be avoided because it's very tight. When you see on the filter all the fat, the quality which is blocked on the filter, I don't think it is proper. Okay. It yeah. probably fit out some... some the best is sulfur. Okay. And not much. You don't need much sulfur. sulfur. Sulfur is a natural product. You have a family of plants called crucifer. Two, three hundred plants which produce sulfur. Mustard is sulfur, onion is sulfur, garlic is sulfur, rocket is sulfur. In cabbage you have sulfur. Uh -huh. Sulfur is not an enemy. Hmm. I mean, look, we are breathing the same air now. 
In that air, you have 20% of oxygen. If it was 40% of oxygen, I would burn my lungs. It's mm. not a reason for forbidding oxygen in the air. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, this is, you see, this is, this is simple. So, for me, the best is by far sulfur. Small doses of sulfur. And in a biodynamic wine, it's possible to do a wine without sulfur. If your pH, my pH are between 3.15 to 3.25, so <coughs> it's not difficult. The problem, yeah. you send it far away. You are not sure that the temperature is always controlled. Mm -hmm. And by putting 2-3 grams by hectoliter of sulfur, you are protected. Okay. I think I have seen too many good wine growers not using sulfur, the wine being in Australia or in Japan being completely gone. And I think it's a mistake. Okay. And again, sulfur is not an enemy at all. Radishes, you have sulfur, you know, so this is what I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine? Yeah. yeah. One yeah. less, so one nice less, one tell, less. Me, okay. tell me, tell me, tell <laughs> me. So, I would like, you know, I, I, uh, very interesting for your older wine. Yes. But there are some different prices for each yes. vintage. Is yes. Is that because, you know, just because, is that because of the inventory or <laughs> no, <laughs> <of> quality? <laughs> no, the inventory did not happen. The chance I have, Couletiran has its own appellation controlée. Mm. It's uh, like Romane Conti, like Chateau Grier. So, yeah. That's a strand. Coulet is a coulet in French is a small valley. So on that valley, you have the coulet, which is a very good spot for wine. When it's flat, when you come out, it's Savonnier Rochemoine, so an upper name of Savonnier. This is good too. And, and a bit further, and east, when you were on top of La Coulée, coming towards the river, this is Les Vieux Clos, this is Savonnier. Savonnier, we are. We are keeping about the price. Of, there is a market for Savonnier. You have now, maybe, I don't know, 40 producers of Savonnier, maybe, mm -hmm. 50, maybe. So we are within the price of the market. Rochemont, same, you have 10 producers within the price of the market. Mm -hmm. Coulé, we are alone. It's not more expensive because we have our own appellation. The I mean, the aging process and the quality is with time for me deeper. Now, if someone is not really a deep taster of wine, he should buy a Savonnier, he shouldn't buy a Coulet. If you have someone moving well in the complexity of a taste, we did many, many blind tests, it Coulet comes first. So, and and the price is also in, in the last three years we had twice frost. Two thousand seventeen we lost sixty percent. Mm. Two thousand eighteen was fine, and this year we lost thirty percent. It's really a problem. There is no winter, and therefore it comes out earlier, and then the frost comes. Oh. It's really a problem. It's really a problem. And I think the price is. Linked to quality too, mm. yeah, yeah, and then and then each individual, you know, have many friends. <laughs> oh, it's good your wine. Then you serve them the lowest quality. They don't <laughs> care. <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> but when you have a guy, you know, you can really discuss wine, smell, chew it, sing, change of temperature, taste the wine at sixteen, at twenty. If you want to make sure, taste the wine at twenty-five. The slightest problem becomes enormous. It's a good way for really seeing all the qualities. Even temperature? Yes. Oh, even 25. Even, you see everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it is pleasant. I'm saying use it as a tool of analysis. Every aspect. Every aspect comes out at 25. Nice. When you see on the back label, drink it cold, my advice is move away. <laughs> <laughs> because... You don't drink a wine too cold, or it's just cold, but then you can put anything inside. It I doesn't see. matter. 
Okay. So, what's your suggestion? Temperature of serving your wine. Uh, From we still disagree a bit <laughs> with my daughter. <laughs> if you serve a wine at 16, 17, mm -hmm. after 20 minutes, it's 18, 19, and I think this is the best. But okay. sometimes people, the people want it colder. But the colder it is, the less you see the deepness. Okay. You see, that's the thing. But the customer doesn't understand always. Huh? That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's fine. You have yes. a lot of wine from Julie, so we can test it. Yeah. <laughs> on yours. <laughs> After 40 years, <laughs> if you are all alone, <laughs> you are all alive. Okay? <laughs> no. On the aging process, you get... <coughs> 85% of the quality within 10 12 years. 10 12 years. Okay. Yes. Okay. After it's fun because it's old, etc. And, and what I knew in biodynamic now versus what I knew in 1980 when I started is very different. When we started, we knew nothing. You had Jean-Pierre Frick in Alsace, Stefano Bellotti in Italy, François Boucher not too far. Uh, and two, three others we did not know what we were doing just were there, I don't know why actually, but we were there <laughs> and, and uh, the more you move with time the more you understand your, plan, your place, your plant the more you move ahead, so with the same quality of year, today it would be much better than 40 years ago, but it's, it's a very interesting trip because because everything is subtleties and you are just connecting your place like like an antenna to to get the best possible of the soil for the roots and of the climate that's all what you do and plants I do many uh, many tea with nettle etc according to the weather if it's cold you bring a plant which brings heat if it is if it is uh, too dry, you bring nettle, it's a miracle to make a tea of nettle. So, this teaching should come, it's not really there today, unfortunately, because it gives really, it really makes an interesting life, you know, and uh, this is why I was saying farming should return to an art, that I'm really convinced of. Good, good. good. Now, I call Sonia, okay. and... and uh, you taste. You are tasting not yet. Yeah, oh, already. 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 Yes. already. Okay. Okay. In the morning. Okay. Yeah. So now, where do you go? Uh, you move uh, where? No. We go lunch first. Huh? Lunch, lunch first. first. Ah, lunch and, and after. Later, go to Omar. 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 D'accord. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, finally, we have ah, a special gift for you: uh, ah. mango cake from Taiwan. Yeah. Mango cake. Great. Yeah, right. mango. Yeah. Mango. Yeah. mango is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. We have a photo. Take a photo. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ready. Okay, one, two, three, voila. Okay. Okay, thank you. Another one. Another one. Come, come and do this. In Chinese word, it has the pressure. It's about half. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Not at all. Thank you for your visit. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Very kind of you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Learn a lot. Goodbye. Thank you very much. And I thank you, Sonia. By the way, one moment. You have to sign your name. Mais, mais, euh très 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 vieux. Alors c'est mille euh, non, non, 1945 a, a, ou. But I would like to know which year because on some years you see the price is going up because it's very old and it's not oui mais je veux dire c'est pas toujours pour ça que c'est bien meilleur vous voyez ce que je veux dire so, uh, 
Mais euh, demandez à Sonia, elle a un she has a price list of all vintages, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oui, oui. 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 Oui, oui